Hi, Clay Pike here. It's November the 25th, and yesterday we planted all of the um, the beans, and today we're going to give a little example of how I go about trying to prop these up. These right here, this, this row of beans right here are called half white runners, and they only get about so high, so I, I at Home Depot bought some of these smaller stakes. These right here are like, you know, I think you get like five or six for two bucks, and all you have to do is stick one in and run the support across the top, and that's all you need for those guys. And the pole beans get a little taller, and so we get these taller ones over here. As you can see, there's, I'll give you an example of how that works, but those are what we use for the other ones. So I just watered the garden this morning. I watered this by hand yesterday, but I know you can't see this, but I ran the sprinkler system and you kick the soil back and I just realized that, you know, it's pretty dry. Even after 30 minutes of running the system, uh, the soil underneath is still hasn't been penetrated. So we have to check that out. But so we'll go ahead and give you an example of how we go ahead and run these supports for the beans. So I'm going to take a picture of the, the half white runners on the other side that I've started. They're already so high and they, they stalled out. They they're really not growing as tall as the other beans like I mentioned before. So you know I decided to use these shorter poles. They work just fine. They're a little bit less money. And what I've done is I've cut my, I pre-cut my coated wire to 25 foot lengths and I measured out uh, about a roll of this of 150 feet or 175 feet and I figured you know just go ahead and make your your rows that you're going to support 20 25 feet because any more than that they get a little bit too heavy and you get a lot more sagging than you probably want to deal with from the weight of all the plants it becomes a little bit too much for them so decided to go with the 25 the 20 25 foot which would probably be you know, less weight for the for the wire to have to support. So what I'm gonna do, and yeah, just to see about where the height is, I'm gonna sink in the ground a couple, one in the middle, one on the ends, just so I know about how high to make my wire. There's that, and so, what we do is we use one of these, these, uh, I don't know what you call them, U fence post kind of support. And what I do is put one at the end down here, seeing that this is going to be my height here. I'll just go a little bit below it and tack one of these. Oh, Okay, try that again. <laughs> this, you can tell I'm not a carpenter. Tack one of these right in there. I mean, I could probably go a little bit higher. So, pull that out. Try this one more time. Maybe about right here. This is a couple two inches too low. Okay, so now what we do is we just get these clamps. Let me come up here and show you what's going on here. These are the clamps that we use. I'm going to zoom in to the other side of the, of the, uh, the garden so you get a better idea of what I'm doing over here. Zoom right there. All right, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll 
figure we'll just cover all the bases. A lot of this stuff is common sense, but you know, I've done it a few times and to be efficient with this wire, which is not extremely inexpensive. I mean, it's not really super pricey, but it can add up once you start buying a bunch of it. So I feed, feed it through, go through that clip I showed you, come around to the other side here and just feed it through and just tighten that baby down like this. Oh boy, I could have got a little more bite on that. I got about a, an inch showing off here. Well, it's not super tight. This fitting is a little bit fat. So now we go to the other side over here. And what we'll do is we'll pull back here all the way and maybe we get a close up of how we're doing it right from this angle here. And if I was really particular, I'd measure down. Let me go walk over here just to see about, I use my hammer as a guide. Down, just at the black handle mark is where we're at here. So if I come down here and put it right there, that would be pretty consistent with the other side. Go over here. No need to stick them in all the way because you're gonna just pull these out for next year's crop when you, you might plant something different. So next year you'd pull those out. So you wanna take this and run it through here first and then go around here and come through. Oh boy. You see, I could have made my rows a little bit longer. I've got some waste there, but we won't cut it next year. We'll just make sure that we pull these back a little further. Because I, I laid one of these pieces I pre-cut on the ground it must have been a short one I didn't measure properly. I laid out a 25 foot tape measure and cut all these 25 feet. But then when I laid my rows out, they were only 21 feet. By the time I did the loop around, I figured 21 feet would work. So that's that. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a little piece of zip tie or something to hold this up for now to just hang down. And that's that, that's how that goes. So. Let me pull back here, just leave it like this, and we'll show you. You know, it's okay if it has a little sag. You're really not going to get these super tight because unless you see me at these poles in, the weight of these plants blowing in the wind is going to loosen over time your poles. But you just want to have them there so that you can uh, tie these off to them. So here, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go every other one for now and, st and stagger these. So it's kind of trapping. I'm going on one side of the, one side of it here and then the other side over here. And some of these, we have two, two plants in the ground and some of them we have just one plant, but for now we're just gonna put one pole on each one. And uh, just to make a little side note, you know, I've purchased these little bamboo sticks at Home Depot over the last couple years, and I, you know, through trial and error, I've realized that some of these guys are super skinny, and then if you, if you pick through the, the packs, you can get the more beefy ones, and these guys right here, uh, I picked up about a half a dozen packs yesterday, that were all fairly stout, which is nice because the smaller ones are gonna be more, obviously they're not gonna give you as many years of life. These things right here will last a few years, especially if you uh, pull them up and put them in uh, under something to keep them dry, put them in your garage or if you have a shed or I just stick mine under the pole barn and keep them out of the weather and then what happens is these beans will completely wrap around these poles 
and you're talking about some time consuming endeavor trying to get those suckers off. What I do is I just throw them on the ground under the pole barn out of the way spot and let, let them dry out thoroughly and then come the next year you pick them up they just crumble right off they're dried out. So that's it that's an example of how we go about laying out the beans putting the support up and occasionally I'll take a little piece of wire and just tie these off so what you end up with is a pretty rigid nice supporting system and you know it's, it's really nice I love the pole beans I like anything that's up high keeps it out of the dirt it makes it easy to harvest your your food and it's just fun watching these things grow so one other note what I'm gonna do is I decided I'm gonna do some time-lapse photography I'm gonna take like for instance on this pole set set up a, a piece of wood with a couple grooves where I can slide my camera into position so it's basically mounted here and take a shot uh, I'm gonna try to do every other day and do and then seam together a time-lapse photography situation which I think will be pretty fun and just to see how fast these things grow because <clears throat> it's deceiving how quick the turnaround is on these these vegetables but if done properly you will have more food than you can shake a stick at. Last year we, we, we had so much we just thrown away way too much food. This year I bought a ball canning pressure cooker and a bunch of jars and we're going to experiment to see how well and you know how easy or difficult uh, canning is. So all right well thank you so much. I hope you can use a couple of these little tips and, and wish you a lot of success with your vegetable garden.